China's economy has grown at its fastest rate since records began. GDP surged an astounding 18.3% year-on-year in the first quarter as the country's recovery from the coronavirus pandemic sped up. The jump is further evidence of China's impressive economic rebound from when it was the world's first epicentre of the pandemic. But as Joel Flynn reports from Hong Kong, that number might not be nearly as impressive as it seems. The first quarter of 1992 may not stick out in the minds of many people, but this was when China's economy had recorded its biggest jump in growth. At the time, officials touted the country's blend of socialism and capitalism as the cause of its success. In the first quarter of 2021, China's economy grew even faster, but this time sounding cautious, not confident about the future. The economic recovery has continued in the first quarter and there are a growing number of positives. But we must note that the global pandemic continues and the international environment remains complex. The foundation of the domestic recovery is not solid and the service sector and small businesses continue to experience difficulties. Year on year, the economy grew 18.3 per cent in the first quarter, up from 6.5 per cent at the end of 2020. The reading is heavily skewed by the plunge in activity for the first quarter of last year, though. That's when China imposed strict lockdowns at the start of the coronavirus pandemic, causing GDP to contract 6.8 per cent. The recovery is being led by strengthening exports, but domestic demand is also showing signs of improvement. Retail sales were up 34% year-on-year in March, much more than analysts had predicted. While things may be normalising on that front, there are worries behind the numbers. Higher income groups have really led the consumer recovery, whereas if you look at the lower income segment in China, uh, indeed these households are still uh, suffering and, and still trying to get uh, still trying to recover incomes that were lost during the height of the pandemic. There are other concerns too. On a quarterly basis, overall growth slowed more than expected to 0.6% between January and March. That represents a big drop from 3.2% in the previous quarter. Industrial output was significantly slower as well. Substantial growth in consumer borrowing, meanwhile, is starting to worry regulators and China's central bank and could represent the biggest risk to the economy in the coming years. If you want to maintain high investment rates, that requires a lot of credit growth, a lot of bank lending. And so I think it underscores that there still is a longer term challenge that the Chinese policymakers face about reducing uh, the economy's addiction to debt. Chinese stock markets, meanwhile, are jittery over the prospect of tightening fiscal and monetary policies, even though policymakers have promised to avoid sudden changes. China, though, keeps churning out GDP growth. That's the envy of the world. This year, it's now forecast to expand 8.6%. That puts it on track to overtake the United States as the world's largest economy in 2028. Joel Flynn, TRT World, Hong Kong. Min Yi is an associate professor at Boston University's Pai Di School of Global Studies. She told us more about what's behind China's economic rebound and the challenges that lie ahead. Uh, I, I like to uh, unpack this uh, first quarter uh, in, in a couple of ways. Uh, one is we, we, if we read this uh, record growth number over two years, right? so 2019 and then 2020, and now we are in 2021. And then we'll find that the uh, uh, GDP growth uh, would be uh, around a little bit under 6% rather than the 18.3%. And this is more or less uh, pre-pandemic uh, level of expected and performed growth. Um, and uh, the, the other thing is we have to unpack the structure of the performance of the, the, the economy. Uh, so this time, the, the one sign is not only industry and investment, uh, that those uh, have revived. Uh, but more importantly, um, retails, consumption, um, and services, uh, and the housing sale have largely revived. Uh, so if we use two years uh, duration, then the Chinese economy uh, has uh, overcome a, a lot 
uh, the uh, pandem pandemic related uh, downward or destruction or damage. So this is a very positive sign. Earlier this year, uh, it was already uh, very clear uh, the the pandemic is, threat is not over. Uh, so during the uh, China's Lunar New Year, uh, all the travels, gatherings, and uh, were basically stopped. Um, and, and this uh, the recurrence threat of pandemic is still there. Uh, the, the second is the Chinese government uh, did not want to overstimulate uh, the, the economy and they, uh, oh, they starting this year already begin to uh, roll back uh, the uh, rescue packages that China applied uh, uh, last year. Uh, and I think I want to underscore that the recovery was achieved with relatively moderate and uh, well-targeted uh, rescue packages and focusing on local uh, economy and focusing on stimulating domestic demand.